Garrett Soloway, President and CFO, Chief Market Strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com, joins us to help us make sense of the topsy-turvy market that is taking the luster away from silver and gold. These topics and more on this week's edition of Metal Money. I'm your host, Patrick Vieira. Garrett Soloway, welcome back to Metal Money. How are you doing? Hey, I'm doing so well. Thank you so much for having me back. Glad you had time to visit us once again. Um, you know, Garrett, the USD is seemingly getting somewhat just a little bit stronger, but with trillions in stimulus on the way, in your opinion, will a stronger dollar be a continuing trend? That's a great question. So it's a couple of factors here going on. You know, number one, you have the fact that the dollar short side people betting that the dollar was going to go lower. That was so overpopulated. And in general, when you see markets that get too heavy to one side, you're going to see a move in the opposite direction. So what they call is, is kind of shaking out the weak hands. So you got to get those weak hands to kind of jump out of that trade since it was too easy on the downside. And I think that's partially why you're getting a bounce right now in the dollar. In fact, what I want to do is quickly show my chart here. And I think this will be a very helpful chart for everyone to kind of take a look at. And you can also see on a technical basis why the dollar bounced. So you can see here, this is the chart of the DX, the U.S. dollar index futures. And right here is where we bounced recently. And you can see it's right at the 89 support level. And what's amazing is this was the previous pivot going back to, I believe, 2017, 2018. And then if you go back even further, you can see previous pivot highs right here and right here. And what that tells you is that that was a major support line. So not only was the dollar heavily weighted to the short side with too many investors betting it was going to go down, but then you also hit a support line, which has created this bounce. And I think that's really what's going on here. It's a combination of shaking out the weak hands and then also uh, the technical support. Now, the bigger question, right, is with the stimulus coming from the Biden administration, with the Federal Reserve still being super, super dovish, will the dollar eventually break lower? And the answer is yes. I mean, it, there's really no other option, right? Um, when you're printing trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars, it's going to dilute the currency. So what I'm watching for here is when you break this 89 support, you actually have no major support all the way down until basically below 84 on the DX. And that's one heck of a move down that could take place. So as a trader or an investor, if you're watching for something, Watch that 89 technical level. If it breaks, watch out below. The dollar will get weaker very, very quickly. All right. Thanks for that, that chart, Gareth. Uh, you know, gold hit all-time highs last year, roughly $2,070 an ounce. And since then, almost half a year later, gold just cannot seem to hold that 1950 price target. At least four times gold has touched 1950, only to sell off and at times sell off pretty heavily. What is causing traders to sell when gold is at about that 1950 price target? So, so what's going on here, in my opinion, is traders are still kind of deciding whether or not the breakout or a potential breakout is in store or in order. So you pierce the previous all-time high. Um, you got above $2,000 per ounce, but you've pulled back below. And I think traders are just deciding, is it a breakout? Is it just a stalled double top? something in that in that area. But I think what's also going on is you have Bitcoin. Bitcoin is definitely pulling money away from gold right now. And in regards to Bitcoin, there's a certain amount of money that doesn't want to be in the slow moving gold. You know, it's it's gold is is trusty, but it's not flashy. And I mean, the metal is flashy. We know that. But in terms of price movement, it hasn't been, you know, it doesn't go up 10 percent a day. It doesn't have these monster moves like Bitcoin. And I think Bitcoin is is pulling the smaller money away. And some institutional money is taking away from gold to go into Bitcoin while it's such an exciting asset. Now, I do think Bitcoin right now is too high. I do think Bitcoin will lose some of its luster and will pull back. Um, so I do think money will rotate back into gold. The one thing I want to show you guys here is so fascinating. Let me show this chart to you guys. It is such a cool chart. Um, and you should be able to see this gold chart. But gold is actually repeating exactly what it did in 2008 or so uh, when it previously broke above the high from the 1979 pivot high here. So 
Uh, if you can see this chart here on gold, you had this high in the late 70s of $876 approximately. And then if you go to the breakout over here, you can see it popped above and then it had this retrace. And interestingly enough, it was a perfect 38.2 Fibonacci retrace. And if you go to the current high pivot here, which was that previous high around 1910, 1920, um, and then you look at the recent breakout that we had above 2000, we've actually seen a retrace of exactly 382, 38.2% Fibonacci retrace, and we're hovering above that. So what I look at when I look at a chart like this, I love seeing these type of pattern formations. It just is so exciting to see something repeating because when something repeats, it means that you know what the future holds, right? So if we see that the 382 retrace on the Fibonacci occurred over here, and then you had this massive move up to the 1910, 1920 high here, the idea is that if you're reproducing that same retrace, the next move up should be almost as dramatic as this previous move. So again, you're looking at a target, in my opinion, of probably just under $3,000 an ounce here, probably over the next three to five years, maybe even sooner on gold. But again, this is just an amazing chart to behold in terms of of what gold has done. Because a lot of people like you, they're, they're saying, well, is gold really breaking out here? What's going on? Is it going to start falling? Bitcoin's the sexier thing. But in reality, it's just doing exactly what it did in the 2007, 2008, 2009 period before it had a big breakout to the upside. Similar to gold, silver has had some pretty severe resistance at about the $26 level. Again, what are traders seeing with silver causing them to seemingly sell over and over again, even pushing silver back down below the $25 price range? Yeah, silver, silver to me is a little bit of a harder one to gauge because it has that industrial component to it. So even though I'm very bullish on gold, metals, commodities in general because of all the printing of money, what concerns me about silver is that people are so bullish on the economy right now, right? So, so you have this additional thought process that the industrial production is going to just have this monstrous impact. And, it's, and that should be driving up silver and really outperforming gold dramatically right now. And we're not seeing it dramatically outperform gold. And that does concern me. So I do wonder that if, first of all, is it telling us, is, is the metal market telling us something about the economy in the future? Is it a leading indicator for weakness down the road that we're not expecting. Uh, and if we do get that weakness, does silver underperform gold? And I think that's really the conundrum here. I do think silver possibly could pull back as low as about 20 and a half, in which case I would accumulate at those levels. But I will tell you this, I'm long gold right now. I am not in silver right now um, as a swing trade. So I'm looking at gold a little bit more positively because I think that the dollar We'll have a breakdown. I think that with dollar printing presses running at full strength, you're going to see more uh, upside in gold right now. But I'm looking to buy silver on certain pullbacks. You know, Gareth, we've had analysts on before, and pretty much all of them had said for gold and silver to break out, we are going to need to see more fiscal stimulus. Well, we see it, and we've been seeing it, and we've recently heard from Janet Yellen, the smartest thing we can do is act big. When you hear things like this, what goes on in your mind? How, how do you process it? Uh, it makes me concerned. Um, it makes me concerned not only for the market valuations, but also for the future of the country um, and really the whole globe in terms of, you know, every country is every, every country, whether it's Europe or, or Japan. I mean, these where every, every central bank is printing so much money. Um, so it makes me very concerned because you have a situation where we're the ones that are going to suffer. The, the, the citizens of the countries are going to suffer because if our dollar weakens and we're already seeing the yuan, the Chinese currency strengthen, there's no way to avoid inflation, right? Because if their goods are going to stay even the same price and our dollar is weakening, that means we're going to get less of their goods for the same price. And that's going to create inflation here. And when you have inflation, and this is my biggest concern, is that you're going to have a scenario where you have inflation, but after the initial surge post-COVID vaccination, meaning that people go out and spend a lot of money, you're going to have this fall off where reality sets back in, where 
small businesses have gone out of business. And we were just talking about the, the potential for raising the minimum wage to $15 and the impact on small business there. I mean, there are so many things that could stall this economy out. And if you bring inflation plus a stalled out economy, it brings us what's called stagflation. And stagflation is the, is the boogeyman of all the terms out there that economists are the most scared about. And I do think that's a possibility, maybe not in the next year, but maybe in the next two to three years, you could be in that position. And if that happens, I mean, oh, man, that's not a good scenario for the economic outlook for this country. Last question here. In, in your profession as a technical analyst, and a lot of people often wonder about this, do algos influence the markets? They do in the short term. All right. So this is this is very interesting. And I know a lot of average investors are very interested in algos and what's their impact. So what, what ends up happening is when news breaks, the algos will interpret that news and push a stock or the market in one direction immediately. The problem is, is that oftentimes as the market digests that news, it re kind of analyzes that in, in that news. And they might say, wait, that's not as bullish as the initial headline led us to believe. And so algos do in the short term push things around. But in the longer term, for instance, if you're swing trading a stock, if you're if you're holding for a longer period than a couple days, even you don't really have to worry about the algos doing too much. The one thing I would say is watch your stops. All right. You know, it, it's important to have stops. But in many situations, algos can push stocks down very quickly to tag stops and then they'll bounce the stock right back. So there's a little manipulation that goes into algorithms as well. And the small investor does have to be careful uh, in the, in a day to day action and, you know, environment. Okay. Couldn't agree more. That's why we have people like you come on the program and, and help us out here. So Garrett Soloway, we appreciate the time you've given and I hope we can do this again soon. Absolutely. It was a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for coming on Garrett. There you go. Why traders and perhaps robots make the moves they make with silver and gold. As always, let us know what you think in the comment section below and remember to keep it liquid, keep it real. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next episode of Metal Money.